Brandon, this is an unbelievable solid axle Tacoma and it's kind of a sleeper, right? Um, how long have you owned this truck? 10 years, 10, almost 11 years. And you've gone through all the stages of building this truck, right? Oh, of course, it's uh, IFS, then we did uh, springs in the front, now it's- So you did your typical coilover kit with the three inch leveling kit, it yep. rode like shit because the A-arms were at a steep angle. Yep. The tires rub, so you probably had to trim the body mount. Uh, CV boots spraying grease, that's, <laughs> that's the fun one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, just like anything, it's like never good enough, so you just keep trying. And, and what year is this? It's a 2000. So 2000 Tacoma Extra Cab V6. 3.4. Auto. Yep. Auto. Um, and so the first time we met, you called WFO and you were gonna solid axle it. Correct. And refresh my memory a little bit, I think, did you go with the Toyota axle? No, so we were, I had a uh, Waggy 44. Okay, that's right. And the pinion bearing had wallowed out the housing. So that kind of snowballed into the high pinion 44 that you had from a 78. Four. So this axle is a uh, 76, 77, I believe, 78. right? 78. So was it a three quarter ton one? Oh, no. oh no, you're wrong. So it's a 76, 77, okay. half ton, F100, F150 front end. Okay. Uh, so it's full width, high pinion. Um, we had that yep. and we ditched the Wagoneer axle, yep. but we did go leaf springs to begin with, right? Yep. So you bought the whole trail gear leaf spring solid axle kit, right? Yep. So this whole kit came in a box, we pulled it out, we just morphed the high pinion 44 in with the trail gear kit. Exactly. And what size tires did you go with? At the time, that was 35s. So 35s, we sent you out, and it was capable. You could go through the Rubicon and all that stuff, right? Uh, which it did. I did Fordyce on 35s years ago. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then when he went with the leaf springs, now what did we tell you when we put the leaf springs in? That I'll hate them and then I'll be back to Lincoln. <laughs> so. And I think you ended up even putting a track bar in with the leaf springs too to try and get it to drive a little uh, straighter. Yeah. It didn't want to steer. It was a it was a weird effect where you would turn the wheel and the truck wouldn't want to go with it. So we track barred it and it corrected everything. So the steering was nice and responsive again, oh, but it just wasn't the ride you're looking for and yep. what you want to do. Yep. So fast forward five more years or whatever, and then you linked it, right? Yep. So at this point, you'd been building a bunch of stuff at your shop, getting super capable at fabbing, and called us up and said, okay, Trevor, let's do the kit to now link the same high pinion 44 right exactly and so we went with the radius arm kit right yep so look in here i can see that you have the trail gear dual case cross member it's a dual case cross member and so the link mount just welds right to the frame here huh exactly i couldn't use your cross member because of the dual cases yeah and how you'd already done it so you yeah. just one link mount to the frame radius arms High pinion 44, and then this is our frame plate, correct? Exactly. So frame plate, shock tower, you went with Fox 12 inch coilovers? I went with the 12 inch instead yep. of the 10, planning to possibly do a one ton swap in the future. Gotcha, and then you got uh, the Fox air bumps, Toyota steering box, you have the PSC kit with hydro assist now. Yep, so it's got the high pressure pump. Yep, and then what size tires are these? 37s. 37s. So, being that you went from the Wagoneer 44 to the High Pinion 44 and you're still six lug, then when you had a rear end problem, what did you have to do back here? Um, so 14 bolt swap and so, we did a, a solid manufacturing six lug, six lug hub conversion. So if you take a look here, six lug, full float, 14 bolt. Um, in order to make this work right, you got to turn down the wheel hub and, or the wheel hub comes turned down, you gotta turn down the axle shaft, use these special 12 point bolts so the wheel comes on and off. Alan and the boys did that in the gear and axle shop. And then the result is full float 14 bolt in the rear, so basically bulletproof on 37s, has our Chevy 63 inch swap kit, um, and it has a torque arm and disc brake, correct? Yep. Uh, you built this bumper, right? Yeah, that was just box steel that I had for scrap and I started cutting. And then you got rid of the swing out, put the tire up top, less bulk in the back. Yeah, it's just kind of kept getting hung up on things. Um, so trying to get weight forward. So 37 inch Pro Comps, race lines, 
dual cases. Uh, are these the trail gear sliders? They are. Trail gear sliders, you know, almost all of this home built. Um, on your dual cases, do you have a low gear case in the back or what? So when I had Marlin set this up, um, I ended up getting the 4.7 comp set. Okay. So stock rear comp comp in the center. Oh, so 4.7 in the in the crawl box. Yep. And then stock gears in the rear case. Yep. And this is a Tacoma stock case still. Yep. So just move the stock case back. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Like that. Um, as far as how everything goes, you got a long slip travel master front drive line, uh, Toyota stuff all the way around. Yep. You even just swapped out, did the new forged Toyota flange in the rear because you're running Toyota drive shafts. Yep. One piece rear drive piece shaft, rear. right? Yep. Um, and then up front, did you build this front bumper? That was my very first welding project. Okay. Yeah, so it's a, um, it was a DIY kit. Um, from Relentless Fab yeah. and just showed up with a pallet of CNC cut parts. So built the front bumper and then on the front end, like even though it's a 44, everything's done really clean. So you built your own skid for the front diff, it looks like, huh? I did, yeah. That looks like a lot of work. Bolts onto the cover, wraps all the way around the back with a U-bolt. Standard uh, uh, inch and a half, 250 wall DOM tie rod. So I can see skid plate here protecting the PSC ram. Even though it's up pretty high, you didn't want to have any chance of hitting that ram. Exactly. So crossover steering with all of our components to radius arm this high pinion Dana 44. You've owned this for years and years and years. You drive it on the highway. I mean, right now you just drove two hours to come see us, right? Exactly. So it's, it, I built this to be able to leave my house, go wheel um, and drive back home. So here's a question that some people may say, well, Dana 44s aren't gonna work for hardcore rock crawling. They're gonna break, it's not a good idea. So how many times have you broke the 44? Zero. So does it have stock axle shafts or chrome alloys? Uh, Yukons. So it's got chrome alloy axle shafts. Yep. And you've run Ford Ice, Rubicon, you know, lots of other off-road hardcore rock crawling trails. The only thing I've broken up front is a hub. So locking hub, that's your kind of fuse. Exactly. And uh, it just proves that people can do this on a 44. We offer the parts to do radius arm with a 44 if you find one. Um, and it keeps the truck a lot lighter, a little more power, right? So sure. you, what gear ratio are you running with 37s? Uh, 488. So 488s, 37s, the automatic, I just drove it down the highway with you, seems to pull just fine with the 3.4. Uh, 3.4 and the Speedo's dead on. Speedo's dead on, you're not okay. doing any calculating, okay. okay. Um, and this is gonna be probably a thousand pounds lighter than if you're doing one tons and 40s and super duties and all that, and that makes a big difference, you know, when you're pulling through the trail. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, anything else you wanna add on this that we missed? I don't know. The engine is super stock. I tried to leave everything extremely clean and simple. It's got a K and N intake, that's it. So um, stock engine, stock transmission, runs yeah. perfect. Radiator's factory, doesn't overheat. Yep. Um, so leave those things alone and focus on the suspension aspect of it. Absolutely. And the crawl box is obviously a big deal for not overheating the transmission. Game changer. Yeah, yeah obviously. So yeah. Super fun truck. Well, thank you for showing us this because we see a lot of extreme ones, but we don't see the sleepers. And you know, we have another customer, uh, Brian, he has a 44 in the front of his crew cab. Yep. He drives it to Moab. He does Rubicon. He does Ford Ice. He wheels at least 20 or 30 times a year. And he's broken his 44 one time. The stock axle shaft broke and then he went to Chrome Ollie's. Yeah, so impressive. you guys are kind of proof that you can still get this done without going big and crazy. Uh, I know Mitch, uh, who used to work for us, yep. had a 44 in his and his truck was very similar to this. You kind of yeah. based yours off of Almost his. Almost an identical build. He had the same thing. He It worked really well for him. Yep. Then his little brother bought it, put one tons in it, destroyed it. Completely Wrecked destroyed. it on the driveway. Yep. So, you know, sometimes going too big is too much. We almost forgot to talk about the Corbeaux. So Corbo makes these seats and these are by far the most comfortable I've ever been in a Tacoma. They're super plush, no bars. They sit nice and low. You know, they, they slide forward and back really easy. Um, for a big guy, 
this is a must in a Tacoma. And then while you're in here, you can see, look at these switches. These are uh, PTO switches. So that's for the air lockers, front and rear air lockers in this thing. And then you can see there's the uh, dual transfer case coming right up in the console. Everything's still factory here. So the inside is still really plush and, uh, and comfortable. Thanks for sharing your truck with us. Right on.